let me echo all the, the gratitude um, to Doug, um, Bob, um, the Connie family for everything that they do to make this possible. It's such a thrilling event. Um, so this past fall, I read Naomi Jackson's excellent book, Converging Movements, Made Modern Dance and Jewish Culture at the 92nd Street Y. Um, coincidentally, I found names of several dancers that I had met or learned of, and very formally, informally, I should say, um, filmed in LA in 2003 and four, six decades after their New York careers. They were part of the early years of modern dance as it was then becoming defined. So I absolutely had to show some of that footage here. The Y became an important site for modern dance as conceived by pioneering performer choreographers, Martha Graham, Doris Humphrey, Charles Weidman, and Tanya Holm, and by pioneering theorists, John Martin, the first New York Times dance critic, and Louis Horst, the composer, dance composition teacher, and critic, none of whom were Jewish. But their work fit the wise, progressive, educational, and aesthetic ethos. They also benefited from the dance performance series that the Y produced starting in 1935, and from the classes they taught here. Many, and sometimes all of their dancers, were Jewish, thanks to their welcome here and at other Jewish institutions like the Neighborhood Playhouse, the Henry Sullivan House. Classes were offered in technique, composition, and dance appreciation. <clears throat> the goal was to be American and Jewish, and the arts as presented in Jewish institutions were a path toward that. To be nourished by modern culture, to then enjoy moving personally or add, add as an audience, or to employ as an artist to express the full range of human concerns, whether through a Jewish, secular, individual, or socio-political lens. Younger Jewish dancers were often given a platform at the Y. Later, some of them left New York for LA, where friendships and collaborations were maintained, eventually through pot regular potluck parties, where some of my filming took place, hence, the pun on Naomi's title, Converging Movers. At one time or another, they all danced with Benjamin Zemach, who had been the Y's first dance teacher in 1930, and he provided a model for creating from Jewish history, the Bible, ritual, music, or the stories and poetry of Jewish writers, as had Habima Theater, which his brother had founded in Russia. I was lucky enough to get to know these women born in 1913, in their last years, as they were already 90, uh, when I filmed them. And I want to show some clips of them recounting moments of their careers. They all were skilled dancers who made their livings as performers, choreographers, and teachers, doing any kind of dance they could, but modern was their spiritual home. You'll hear directly from them, except for Fania and Corinne Hochem, both already gone, but represented by Sue Ramos Dedel. Sue is the only one not in Naomi's book, but you'll see she was definitely part of the scene. Seda Girard's first dance classes were as a child at the Toronto Parrots Shula with Duncan-styled teacher Maud McCann. As a 21-year-old already noted dancer-choreographer in Toronto, Seda came to New York feeling she needed to learn more. She turned down dancing for Graham because she had better paid work through the WPA's Federal Dance Project. She taught modern at the Y in 1940 to 41 at Yiddish Shulas for our Teff Theater and was Charles Weidman's dance partner after Doris Humphrey, creating roles in some of his works such as A House Divided and the James Thurber Fables of Our Time. House Divided was about Abraham Lincoln, by the way. In 1949, she was invited by composer Max Helfman, then working here in New York, 
to create dances for his choral tone poem set to the Russian Jewish poet Itzik Pfeffer's Dinaya Hagoda, the new Hagoda, about the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising. In LA, by 1954, she had a West Hollywood studio, staged opera, and taught at the University of Judaism for 20 years. Her company toured the West Coast in 1960 to 61 under Columbia Artists' Management. And here is Seda. I did it in Toronto, I did it in Detroit, I did it in Chicago, and next up, brought me to Brandeis, and that's how I landed in California. But I did it here, we did it in the Santa Monica Auditorium, and we did it at the Shrine Auditorium. But we did it with a full symphony orchestra and a chorus of over 100 boys in this very beautiful poem. He writes, is what the observant people recite on the eve of, of the liberation of the Jews from Egypt. So he writes this, There was no need to recite it, so it had to recite itself. And he says, this and stars like eyes began to weep, and the Haggadahs had to read themselves. There's a couple of pictures from her last production of this in LA. That's the very end. These are the survivors of the extermination of the ghetto. Corinne Chochem was born in Russia in 1905 and her sister Fania in 1914. Their family came to the U.S. in 1920. Corinne formed an Israeli folk dance troupe in New York, uh, through which she taught at the Y, releasing three records of Jewish folk music and two dance books. The first, Palestine Dances, in 1941, and the second, 19, in 1948, was called Jewish Holiday dances created in LA, where she was a beloved teacher and visual artist. Vanya Hochem, uh, Sage, she added Sage as a translation to her name, uh, moved to LA in 1941 with her husband Max Finkelstein, who was also an artist. In New York, she had been part of the Workers' Dance League, whose mission was to create workers, to educate workers, in dance for social change. Her commitment to social justice included even once getting arrested while up on a box with a bell warning people not to patronize a certain restaurant that refused to serve African Americans. She had a company in LA for several years, then turned fully to teaching. As you can see, this was one of her performances in New York with uh, uh, Lead Belly, famous singer at that time. Sue Ramos Nadel joined a touring vaudeville company after high school, then danced on Broadway and worked with Helen Tamiris. In LA, she performed and taught children. Um, I think on the right of this picture is Daniel Nagrin. I don't know who that other gentleman is, so if anybody does, please tell me. Um, okay. Here's Sue Ramos. A couple more pictures of Sue, and then we'll hear some film. Corinne Hama discovered Daniel Nagra. He was just a kid out of college, but he wanted to dance, so she used him in, in her company. Corinne had a company in her. They had a studio. And she shared it with Simon. And so that's where he got his beginnings. Then he danced with Fania and me. That's um, Sue on the, uh, your left and Fania on the right. And this is Sue. Okay, I'm just going to leave that there. Um, 
Eva Deska Garnett was one of the first um, choreographers for the Merry-Go-Rounders, the Wise Company for Children's Audiences, founded by Doris Humphrey, Bonnie Bird, and Fred Burke. In LA, she taught exercise and jazz dance at the JCCs, had a company with Sue, and also developed geriatric calisthenics, receiving grants to train others in her method. I guess it worked. She lived to be 102. Um, and here is Eva. I worked with Benjamin at the uh, Barbizon Plaza Hotel, which was very close to uh, Look Sanders Little Theater. It was a repertory dance theater, and my name is. It was the only dance theater in New York. Alice, Cole, and Jose. Were the dance shots? Yeah, I had a scholarship there. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jack Cole was there. That's who Jack Cole became. The way we got Social Security was because Tamiris and Doris and John Martin started a dance association and accomplished that. Eva, Lily Mann, and I, we had Mary. been in the Follies together. Ziegfeld Follies. As exotic dancers, that's Lily Mann on top, Sue in the middle, Eva on the bottom. Uh, exotic dancers in those days meant modern dancers. <laughs> I skipped something. Um, let me go back. There's one more, one more film of Eva, or there was. Where'd it go? Oh, okay. We just we had to change everything just now. So I think we have. Oh no, there it is. Frida Flyer Maddow, born and raised in LA, studied and danced with the Zemach as a teenager, and came to New York to be in the much delayed Broadway Jewish pageant, The Eternal Road, which he choreographed. Instead, while waiting for that thing that happened too late for her, instead she was invited into the Graham's company. Everyone in those days were political lefties, and her husband, who she met through Graham dancer Jane Dudley, was a successful playwright, screenwriter rather, Ben Meadow, who was blacklisted in Hollywood where they had moved in the 1940s. And here's Frida. When Martha Morgan was gonna prepare this book, Martha rented this Henry Street settlement playhouse. And every day we put on our and was the whole dance. And Barbara Morgan was there all the time taking these pictures and make this book. And I never heard of anybody really doing that, reenacting the whole, every, every dance that we did in the whole, and I mean, in full makeup and music and everything, you know, really a performance without an audience. This is Marjorie 
Tony Baslow, Boris Cunningham, this is me, Rita, and this is Ethel Butler. But there's another nice one I want to show you. Oh. Here's Del Fisher <coughs> and yours. And what's the dance? Every soul in a oh. circle bar. Rita, me. I'll have Ethel Butler. Letter to the World. The oh, one of my favorites. This is the party scene out here. The where party. are we? Where are you? This is really the reason I left Martha's company. Because, <laughs> because I had a big change, you know, from this costume to another costume that was just the four girls alone. We had the special dance. And we never got zippers in our costumes. And they sold me into this costume, and I can't get it off. <laughs> Probably because it's the whole day. I'm never coming back here again. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they worked so hard, and we oh, got no. off for a zipper. <laughs> and did you get to spend very much time with William Morris? Well, yeah, we had a class with him. I took a class with him for two years. Yeah, well, this was part of our scholarship. He had this one course called Three Classic Forms. I mean, it's based on music. You get a song, you get the form, and the context. <laughs> and that also, what was very important, was that you didn't do something that you weren't capable of, that you shouldn't be so ambitious to give yourself things you can't do. Eugene Morin had a company called Dance Players. So, Every day, three, and then at the end of three months, he said, You want to be in my company? I said, Sure. And this was really got me. I've been with Mark six years, pair with Nancy, <clears throat> and we've done all these ballads, prepared with Gene. You know, he said, By the way, this is on point. Dad, what's on point? I thought I would collapse, but I need to say a word. <laughs> Jack Cole and that So that's um, Frida's next to Mark Platt. Use the mic. <laughs> Let's try to stay out of your way. Um, that's Frida next to Mark Platt. And um, then uh, the, the blonde, and then that's Sue Nadell um, there. And the other two, I, I don't know. So this was a, a Hollywood film. Okay, I have one more clip. That will end it, it's two minutes long. And I'm, this is Seda Girard again, and I think she concludes best of all. But there was something else that was very important to me, and I think to all of us, is what did we dance about? And what did we want to say? which was very different from Swan Lake and Sleeping Beauty and all the loveliness. I fell in love with the tutus like every kid did and the toe slippers and all the rest of it when I was young. But the idea of the originality and of the meaningfulness of ballets like A House Divided about Abraham Lincoln, ballets that are satires like James Thurber, ballets like uh, Martha's uh, Appalachian Spring. Green Table. Green Table is fabulous. It's a memorable. So we were looking for not only preserving the, extending the bodies and sharpening the bodies and 
desensitizing the bodies. We were looking for more than that. We wanted to find something to say that we would have the emotional depth to project. And that, to me, was the big passion after passion for just movement, which was just glorious as far as. After the technique, you had to have a beer oh, there. Yeah, without the reason to dance, right? Very, very well said. Yeah, very good. Yeah. The is absolutely right. Without the technique, we were nothing. So you had to get the technique, yeah. but you had to fill it with right. a passion that's more than the ability to dance. It's startlingly, beautifully, expressively, individually, but to be able to project a feeling and a thought that he ever thought of this was danceable yeah, before. Right. And to me, that was very exciting. Yeah.